So I'm going to go back to sketch two. I'm going to edit and we're going to begin to work with the shape. All right. So notice that the shape doesn't really look like it um, is symmetric in itself. It looks like it's been, you know, possibly changed or adjusted when it was imported, maybe something along the way of actually exporting it made it a little bit unsymmetric, but that's okay because what we want to do is we want to use it as our reference. So I'm going to start making a reference grid. And I'm going to do this by creating two lines here. I'm going to hit escape key and I'm going to make two more lines. I'm going to make one vertical. And then I want to make one from the origin that's going down vertically. And to make sure that we see this, let's go ahead and, and hop out of the sketch. Let's rotate this around and we want to modify solid one. We're going to go ahead and hide it. And notice that what we're doing here, let's go ahead and hide the YZ plane as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to set up a grid here or rather some reference geometry that'll help us make sure that everything we're doing is symmetric because we know that what we brought in is not symmetric and it's not a great starting point. So this is going to allow us to make sure that our geometry going forward is going to be symmetric. So we're going to use the equal constraint to make the left and right lines equal and then the top and bottom lines equal. Now this means that if I drag one, the other one is going to move with it. And this allows me to give it some dimensions. Now this is the important part because anytime you are creating a file, it's important that you drive it with dimensions. So we're going to make this one inch wide and we're going to give this a dimension of 2.5 and notice that it's pretty close to where the original geometry was. So this is probably the intended size two by five. Now that we have this laid out, we can go ahead and turn these lines into construction. So we're going to use the construction option and then just go ahead and select these lines and make sure that they're all construction. You can control select all of them. Make sure that you're not grabbing the dimensions. You're just grabbing the lines themselves. And once you do, they will be turned into dash lines. Now, if you want to, you can turn that option on before you sketch the lines, but sometimes it just, um, it's just easier to do it after the fact. I'll drag these out of the way just to make sure that uh, we can see them and now we can move forward with making our in this case our left or right half symmetric part so we're going to start from the top and we're going to use a spline and depending on what kind of spline you want to use whether it's control vertex or interpolation is up to you um, i like to use control vertex when possible for a few different reasons so i'm going to bring my first line out horizontal now, remember this is going to control the tangency the direction of the curve as well as the weight in relation to some of the other handles. So making this snap to horizontal means that when I mirror this thing from right to left, that it's going to be a perfect transition. I'm not going to worry about any seam or bumps or anything like that. The transition is going to be nice and smooth because this line is horizontal. And then I'm going to put an edge there. I'm going to put one down around here at the mid and I'm going to carry that down. I'm going to put an extra one here, go to this point and say, okay. So now I want to go ahead and add some relations in here. I'm going to start with the horizontal and notice that this top line, if we zoom in, it's actually blue because it has that horizontal constraint added to it. I need to add it to this bottom one. And once I do that again, I'm going to have that same transition as it goes from left to right. I'm not going to be concerned at all about having a bad seam. Now we want to add a vertical relation. I'm going to do this by grabbing this line and making sure that that's vertical. And again, this is where our reference line is. And that vertical relation is going to ensure that we have a nice transition if we decide to model a quarter of it. Now, if we decide that this thing has symmetry top and bottom as well as left and right, we can only work or we can focus our energy on working in just this corner and use that and then mirror it. All right, so that's sort of a good lesson here. And if we want to try and trim this, we can use our trim tool and remove the material on the bottom. So that was the other half of our spline. But notice that when we do that, it goes and uh, it takes away our relation. And this edge here is coincident here, but we need to make sure that this is vertical again. So we'll grab this and we'll make sure that that's vertical. So now we know that 
the mirror across left to right and as well as top to bottom is going to be perfect for us and not give us any issues. So now in order to control the curve, we really only have these control vertices. Uh, so we can move them left and right to try to get the curvature. Now, if it's not giving you the curvature that you want, you might need to add additional control vertices in here. But for the most part, you can drag these left and right and you can move them up and you can get pretty close to that original geometry. What you want to be careful with is a situation like this where your curvature starts out horizontal, it bumps up and then goes back down. And that happens because we've got this point above. And if we turn on our curvature by right clicking and displaying curvature, you can see that this edge right here of the curvature comb is below the line and then it hops above. And that is a bad situation. That's not what we want. So we're going to make sure that we drag this down and keep this curvature comb above that at all points. And we want the same thing as we go down here. Now notice the curvature comb tends to disappear a little bit. We might have to right click on this and we might actually have to modify the curvature display. And we can increase it so we can see a little bit better and maybe add a few more divisions in there. And now it's quite a bit big there, but uh, now what we can see is that this stays on the outside and it actually stays nice and smooth for quite a while, which means we don't have a lot of change in curvature here. We can drag this point up and down and notice that that does change things. And we want to make sure that we snap back to that point and uh, we make sure that they are coincident. We want to make sure that we are coincident with our reference line there. And again, that that curvature is not doing anything funny to the point where it's below the line and going above or in this case, to the left of the line and going to the right. 